everyone, I am Dorian Wayne and this is another Dorian's Do-It-Yourself video. Today it's all about microlates. Let me tell you, I am absolutely obsessed with this style. It is so versatile and gives off such an effortless look. In this video, I am going to take you step by step on how I achieve these flawless extensions. So due to social distancing, this is going to be my beautiful model today. Now whether you do a silk press or even a keratin treatment, you need to make sure that your client's hair is as straight as you possibly can get it. There is a huge difference on how this comes out if you skip this step. So I just wanted to take a moment to shamelessly plug these beautiful mirrors that you guys see here in the background. I created these using products from my local Dollar Tree. I'll leave that link for that tutorial down in the description box. Next you want to start on your sectioning. The sectioning I did on this mannequin is a bit more left out than I would normally do, but here you see the actual sectioning for the back of the head. You don't have to break down your leave out, it's just something I'm accustomed to doing with my sew-in installs. Section off a small amount of hair from ear to ear and temple to temple. The amount of hair that your client has will determine how much hair can be left out at the top. To prep myself, I ready my beads on my crochet needle about a third of the way up. So, so. I tried to get a clear picture of this, but what you want to do is pierce your needle through the center of the doubled weft, right through the middle. Now, with my crochet needle, I secure a small cluster of hair and I pull it back down through the center of the weft. So let me show you that again. Just go through the center of the weft, take a small cluster of hair, and then you're going to go back through the center of the weft again. You want to make sure that the track is close to the scalp, but not directly on it. If it's too close, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable for the client and also cause the natural hair to break off very easily. As you can see, my first bead is snug between the weft and it is virtually undetectable. Now this is an example of when you're not paying attention or you're rushing and just grabbing random pieces of hair. Now look at the bird's nest that I'm creating. That would not only cause your hair to tangle, but will also lead to severe shedding of your natural hair when removing this install. With that being said, you'll want to space out your beads about an inch apart from each other. Once my first row is done, I always flip it up to check for any issues. This track is the most important as it is the foundation for a flat install. The shape of this mannequin's head is quite awkward, so this first track is a lot smaller than I would normally do it. So this is how I would actually install my first ear-to-ear -ear track. It is important that you take this moment to look for any mistakes. Check to make sure that there are no lumps in the wefts. You want to make sure that your bead spacing is accurate. You don't want to have those you looking gaps from the beads being too far from each other. You also want to make sure that there are no beads sticking out. This should feel smooth to the touch and have a seamless ponytail look. This next track, I'm going to start by the ear and go around stopping at the other ear. Just like before, make your way down the track taking neat clusters of hair through the weft and securing the bead. So 
So the beads that you see me using now are significantly bigger than the ones that I was using at the beginning of this tutorial. Don't do this. I'm just not wasting no more good beads on this mannequin head. Especially cause the last time I did a hair for free, she ain't even tipped me. I'm talking about they leave me nothing. So this is about four rows of beaded extensions here. And again, I get to a stopping point where I wanna make sure that I'm still on track. <laughs> I mean, you see what I did there? On track and, and the track. I mean, no. I, I guess it takes a village. So from here, I'll just continue all the way up the shape of the head until I reach my leave out. Now the hair that I'm using for this tutorial is so old, I don't even know where this hair came from. But the head that your client should use, it needs to be full at the ends. If not, when you get to the end of this, it's going to look extremely thin. So I'm right at my leave out now, but I also wanted to show you this real quick. So this is just a little something I do if I have time before a client, maybe the day before. What I do is sew the bead to the weft, and by sewing the bead to the weft beforehand, I finish at least 35 to 45 minutes faster than I normally would. When I do this, my first track I put in would have the beads facing me, so that they wouldn't be seen when you pull the hair into a ponytail. And all of the other rows would be facing the opposite way, so the bead wouldn't be seen when wearing your hair down. As you can see, taking that step out of having to pierce the center of the weft can allow you to move at a faster pace. Once you put in the track, you just cut any of the excess hair. So this is the finished look, and of course I want to show you how it should look on your client as well. This is literally my favorite part. I love seeing this in a ponytail. Again, as you can tell, it is most definitely flat. You don't see any beads popping out. It just looks really good. And like I said before, please, please, please encourage your clients to invest in some good hair. It makes a difference. You don't want to get all the way to the end and it just looks like you didn't do anything because they still got to pay. So now I'm about to slay these curls and show you a few ways you can rock this style. So that about wraps things up. I hope this video was informative for you all. Go ahead and show me some love by clicking that subscribe button. As always, if there are any questions about anything, please feel free to drop a comment and you know I'll respond. And by the way, these are just a few of those DIY projects I pointed out earlier in the video. I have the links for these tutorials in the description box below. See you next time. Mm-hmm.